In this video, what we're going to do is take a look at one of the new features that we've added to the new Bob Art Pro add-on. As you can see here, we have nothing loaded, so let's create a new screen and then click the Bob Art tab at the Data Cam Tree Manager level here. Now you see we can have access to all of the different Bob Art features that we have. By right-clicking on the Bob Art Manager, we can then select Load Image and then choose from any of the images that I have here on my computer or you may have on your computer when you go to use it. So let's go ahead and just select one and it'll take a moment depending on the size of it to actually load into the Bobcad software. Once it's loaded as you can see there we can click view all and we can see that we have this black and white image that we've loaded and you can also now in the Bob Art Pro system you can import AI files, uh, PDF or EPS type vector images which is a nice new feature in the pro version and once we've got our image in there we can go ahead and vectorize it so we come here to the image which is called Griffin and by right clicking on that we can now select vectorize here we have our raster to vector dialog box which gives us a multitude of options to pick and choose from in terms of how we want that geometry to be vectorized and you can see by adjusting the threshold value slide bar that gives us different results and then we can come down here to say remove chains less than 10 pixels and we can increase that to maybe 30 so we can get rid of any small erroneous um, you know circles or geometry that we really don't want on the actual screen by clicking OK that does the trick for us and now by hitting the I key by pressing the I key on my keyboard the image goes away and here's the geometry that we have to work with so that's how easy it is to actually create um, vectorized geometry uh, for CNC machining directly off of an image that you've brought into the Bob Art. Now we, let's say we want to go ahead and, and create an emboss model of this. So let's go up here to emboss model and just right click on it. And then we have a bunch of new options in here. We have a, some of the options in the standard version of Bob Art and then we have the new ones such as emboss two rail sweep and then we have sculpting and smoothing features down here and I'll get to those in just a second let's go ahead and use emboss regular and this launches sort of a kind of a wizard if you will uh, where the first thing that we need to do is provide information regarding stock parameters and the model size is going to default at four inches for X and four inches by Y so we just need to change those to whatever we need and we can just kind of gather that information by looking at the screen actually in this case we're going to do a let's say let's let's add 3.75 for X and let's just go 7 inches for Y so we'll type in 7 and I'll change the resolution to let's say 300 to give us a decent resolution and now we've added this little thing down here called texture appearance this is also in the pro version which you do not have in the standard versions of Bob Art where we have more or less a library of different metal types you can see here by just scrolling through these you can see that we now have different metals that we've had for texturing and if we come here to wood you can see that we've added a bunch of different wood style textures and if we come down here I don't know let's go ahead and choose walnut for example we'll click OK and then we'll click OK again and you can see what that does is that actually adds a texture and that was pretty simple there it is right there and the next phase of the process here is to actually emboss this particular geometry and to do that what we'll do is we'll just go and choose for example let's do a concave arc and actually let's go ahead and do a convex arc and then we'll choose subtract as our application type and we'll do 0.25 and we'll click OK and that adds it to the tree now here underneath the emboss regular this is the first action that we're going to do under this we have geometry so if I right click on that you'll see it says reselect or remove and I click reselect and then just click and drag a selection window over the geometry it's on the screen by pressing the space bar on my keyboard that indicates OK and now you see it still has the red X there so that means that the operation has not been executed yet so what we want to do is come in here to emboss model and right click our mouse and just click regenerate and it'll take a moment 
And what that's doing is that's calculating all of the geometry or all the does all the math for us in order to actually go ahead and emboss this particular shape. And there you go. Now it's gone ahead and embossed this geometry into our material, as you can see there. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of rotate this up. You can see the, the job that it's done. It's actually quite nice, just like that. And we still have our geometry on the screen, so we can do other things with that if we want to. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to simply go right into the translate feature in the software. And I'm going to click and drag a selection window over all of the geometry that we have here. Just indicate OK by pressing the space bar. And then I'm going to move this one inch in the Z axis and press the space bar, or press OK. And that automatically moves all of the geometry to a new location for me. Now I can quickly come up here and just do a top, a front view. There you go. Now you can see the geometry is one inch in the z-axis and I can now easily go to blank, window pick my geometry and press the space bar to indicate OK, click cancel and then go back into a 3D view. Now my wireframe geometry here is blanked out. I could have cut and pasted that into a different layer. I chose to use the blank feature. I want to just basically see this ge this part here on the screen without the geometry in my way for what we're about to do. I can rotate this up and you can see the depth there. Now if you notice some of this some of these areas here are still a little bit jagged and what I want to do now is I want to smooth these areas out so that it's not so sharp and I have better results here. And by going back to my Bob Art tab, I can now come up here to the emboss model, right click my mouse in the tree and use smoothing. And so now I have boundary based smoothing. Well, I don't have a boundary because I just actually blanked it out. So what I have here is I check the box smooth whole model. And by clicking OK, now you can see that's added smoothing to my Bob Art Manager or tree. And what I can do is because I have no geometry here, all I have to do is come back up here and click regenerate again and it'll go ahead and smooth everything out. Okay, so now you can see that the image has changed a little bit. This is a little bit smoother in here. There's still a few things that could be improved. Um, this is sort of deep into this material, this wood type material that I chose. So what I can do is if I don't want to do that, I can actually come back in here and I can right click on this and I can delete a feature. So I'll delete this smoothing feature. And then I have my geometry you can see there. What I want to do is go back to emboss model, right click, and this time I'm going to hit sculpting. Now this is a great new feature because what this does is this allows me to actually physically come in by one of these methods here and click smooth. And then I have a, a diameter that I can change. I can, let's say, make that bigger at a half inch. And then I have a strength value here. So you'll notice that when I switch into a top view, you'll notice I have this little area now that follows my cursor around. So you can see how kind of jagged some of these edges are. Now if I just press my mouse button down and I kind of move my cursor along and over this actual image, you can see what's happening. It's actually changing everything and it's smoothing it out. You can see the areas that I've already done are becoming more and more smooth. And I, while I'm inside this feature, this is also nice, I can kind of come here and I can rotate this model around and you can kind of see the difference in what's going on. Watch as I go over these areas how it becomes more and more smooth. Now you can increase and decrease the power of this particular smoothing tool by simply changing the strength value, which is right here. And you can come in here. Now this is just a quick example of this. It's very simple. I'm just trying to show you how this actually works. If you're dealing with very fine um, you know, art and embossed or relief models using Bob Art. Um, you may want to 
zoom in obviously like I showed you when you're in a feature you can actually zoom in like that you can use your mouse wheel and you can zoom in and zoom out um, you can go into different you know view modes and you can kind of see what's going on I sub I chose to use a subtract feature for this whereas uh, you can use the add feature which would give you more of this kind of a result on the flip side there's that now if you do something in the Bob Art software and you don't like it and you want to make a change or you can adjust it the nice thing about this is where it says undo last operation you see how it's changing everything back to the way that it was so if you don't like that you don't have to exit the feature and start all over again you can actually just come in here and you know change this to 0 0.015 this time there you go and now you can hold down your mouse button and you can come back in here and clean up areas you notice this time it's a lot less dramatic in terms of the smoothing feature that I'm using and you can just come through here and I can zoom in and see what's going on but this is a great new tool that we've added to the Bob Art Pro which is real valuable obviously when you're doing work like this and you're dealing with exotic woods and different types of special materials um, you know you want to get the best result possible all the time it's nice feature to have very nice feature to have in the software okay so that's just one of the things that I wanted to show you in the new feature when you click OK there it is we've made some nice smoothing adjustments there and then we can go directly to applying toolpath and by doing clicking on the cam tree button there that it allows you to access the cam tree manager itself where we can go in and we can add a machining feature so let's say we want to use a slice planer we can come over here and we can actually click next and access the wizards in the Bobcad and we'll click geometry we'll just select it there you go and by pressing the space bar that indicates OK we don't have any boundaries selected here so we can just kinda come back and go through the normal wizard using our arc fit feature to get better results and we can change this alright click next and we'll do a zigzag here zero degrees will be our starting angle click next point oh six two five step over and we'll just click next again and using our options we'll use the extents options and we'll program based off the tooltip and we'll come in here and we'll use horizontal vertical as our link and we'll click finish there and now we can come over to our slice planer feature in the tree and just right click our mouse and then click on compute toolpath and that will go ahead and begin the process of creating the toolpath which you can see we just created there so you can use any of the three axis toolpaths that Bobcad cam software has to offer um, once again by going into the milling stock you can get access them all here by clicking mill three axis in the pro version of the Bobcad cam milling software you have advanced roughing and flatlands and equidistant as well as pencil um, these are all great features to use our slice planer we also have V carving and the nice thing about the the, the uh, V carving feature in the software that we have in Bobcad cam is that it allows you to use a V cutting tool as well as a a uh, flat in cutting tool for uh, doing pocketing in areas where if you're not doing tapered walls or you don't want that V carve effect anywhere where the V cutting tool uh, doesn't want to go it'll actually use a flat end mill for that and you can input all of that information and parameters through the vcarve wizard okay so that concludes this video I hope that uh, this has been a good little example for you to see some of the neat features that we've added with the ability to smooth out your geometry um, your your relief models as well as uh, the ability to work with multiple or different types of wood and metal textures in addition to the ability to create your own if you'd like and uh, the ability also to import the uh, 
Adobe Illustrator and ES, uh, EPS files and PDF vector image files directly into BobArt Pro. And um, okay, thank you for watching this video.